Well, hello everyone. This is Joe Tortonesi coming to you. Welcome to Joe's Drum Shop once again. Uh, we're going to be talking about what we talked about a little bit on the last show, which is triplets and dealing with shuffle patterns. And we're actually on uh, book two. Drum. It's called Drums Two, and it uh, comes out with uh, by Hal Leonard. And we are on page 15 right now. And we're going to be starting with the halftime shuffles. Halftime shuffles are a little different than a normal shuffle. You know, think of the normal shuffle. If you check out our, my, my last show, I was doing a regular shuffle like this. So that's the, that's the normal shuffle. The halftime takes a little bit more and they stretch it out so it lasts a little bit longer. So this first one's called the halftime shuffle number one. Let's play that. Um, first of all, talking about the hi-hat, it's got regular triplets. So we're going to be playing one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, and again, leaving out the ands. So one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, like that. The bass drum is going to be on one and three. And the snare drum is going to be on three. So that makes it stretch out to like a halftime feel. Let's play that. I'm going to play it four times, and then we'll end with a crash. So here's, here's how this goes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A one, a two. Okay, as you can see, when I played that, it took a little bit more time. Obviously, I did it slower, but you see how the, the beat was actually stretched out a little bit farther. Instead of like one, two, three, four, it's one, three, and that's what gives it the halftime feel. All right, I'm going to play it again a little bit faster so you can see that a halftime feel can be played you know, faster as well as slow. So let's hear how this sounds. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, now a little adaptation, adaptation from that one. It's going to be a halftime shuffle number two. It's going to be very simple, uh, just like the other one, but it's going to be a little bit more, uh, not only stretched out, but it's going to have less notes and it's going to feel a little different as far as like the last one. So let's check it out. They're very similar, but you'll hear the difference. Listen to it. I'm going to play it slow. One, two, three, four. One. Okay, as you can see, that one, when we stretched it out, the bass drum was on one, but then we put it on the uh of two and the uh of four. So it made it kind of dance a little bit more, a little bit more busier, okay? But it was still stretched out like a halftime shuffle should be, and it gives you a little bit more fancy footwork, so to speak, on it. All right, the next one, they're going to give you two different shuffle rhythms. Uh, one's called the... Uh, we'll call it a variation of what we just did. But this time, we're not playing the eighth note rhythm on the hi-hat anymore. We're going to be playing quarter notes. So just like we were doing the halftime, we were doing one, a two, a three, a four. This time, we're just going to go one, two, three, four. So our hi-hat's going to stay real straight. And the triplet will come from the snare and the bass, okay? So I'm going to play the first one. Now, there's two different variations of this. So the first one I'm going to play, I'll play it twice. And then the second one I'll play twice, and then I'll put it together so you can hear what it sounds like. All right, the first one sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, a two, three, a four. A one, a two, three, a four. A. All right, the second one. It's very similar to that, but this time the snare is going to do a little bit more busyness. Again, still quarter notes on the hi-hat. Here we go. One, two, three, a four, a one, two, three, a four, a one. 
Notice how that last part of the beat, I did a snare and it went for a one. For a one. So that made the snare drum a little bit busier, okay? Now I'm going to put the two together. I'm going to play two, uh, two of the first, two of the second, and then I'm going to crash at the end. So here's how that goes. Two shuffle variations. Here we go. All right, moving along. We're at the very bottom of page 15 now in, in the book two, drums two. And this is called Shuffle in 6-8. Now, on the last show, we talked about this as well. Not only can you count one end of two end of three end of four end of and make that sound like a shuffle, you can also count it in 6-8. Now, you would count 6-8 a little differently. You'd count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, if you were counting 12-8. But this is, we're only counting half of that. So now we're doing six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So this one, the bass drum's on one and three. Or I should say one and two, because we're going to be doing a kind of a one, two, three, four, five, six. So the bass drum will be one and four. Normally, if you count it, you could count it like one and three. But this time we're going to count it one and four because of the way the six eight is. Hi hats are going to be playing the triplets still, and the snare drum will be on two. Uh, they give you four variations, or uh, I should say four measures of this variation. And let's start off with it: one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Crash. All right, I'll play that one more time a little bit faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, two, three, four, five. Now, see, I could count it that way, one, two, three, four, or I could count it like six, eight, like I did before. All right, we're going on to page 16, and we're going to do lesson four. We are finally on lesson four in the blue book, uh, drums two. Uh, this is called You Got the Blues. Now, in blues music, most of the time, uh, it's made of 12 bars. Now, what's 12 bars? Well, bars they refer to as measures. So it takes 12 measures to make a blues song all the way, all the way through. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we play 12 measures of that, as we go through, by the time we get to the last one, That'll be the end of the song, and the whole song, the way the phrasing of the guitar or the piano or whatever way you're going to play the blues along with the drums, that's how long it takes to get through the whole song, okay? And then they just basically repeat it again and again. So blues can, can be whatever it wants to be, okay? Uh, so on this one here, you know, one of the things that they talk about, another thing I should mention about blues is... Blues is kind of like a, it's kind of like rock and roll, it's kind of like jazz, it's kind of like a mixture, but at the same time, it's uh, talking about things that maybe you're, you know, sad about, or something bad happened, and they like to use words like, you know, giving, they give you an example in here, well, I woke up this morning and my dog had died. Uh, and then the second verse will be, I said I woke up this morning and my poor dog had died. And then the third verse is, I felt so bad when I found him, I hung my head and cried. So again, blues is a very, very much about, you know, a good man feeling bad about something that happened in his life. So that's what blues is all about. So we're going to play this song. And in this song, it's called the 12 Bar Blues. Um, it's going to play... The constant ride symbol, and we're going to play the ride symbol playing 12 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And as we do that, I'm going to play some of the patterns that we just played in the past. And as we go through this, I'm going to start off with uh, the bass drum playing on one, the uh of two, and three. 
Now the snare drum will be switching between two and four and the uh. Okay, so I'll play it once. I'm going to play one measure of it so you can hear what it sounds like. I'll play it with the hi-hat so you can kind of hear the basic form of it. So here's what it sounds like. Now if I do that with the ride cymbal, it'll sound like this. Let's try that out with the song. I'm going to pull up the song right now on the computer here. Let's see. Here we go. Pretty easy to do, very fun to do, and uh, very effective as a blues song. All right, we're moving on to page 17. So that was 16. That's all they have you do on that page. Uh, the next thing is called Less Filling Sounds Great is the name of what they have here. It's called Fillin. And what that means is we're going to play a rock rhythm now. So we're going to kind of get away from the shuffle. We're going to play more straight ahead rock and roll. And this time we're going to add some fills to this particular pattern. So let's, let's talk about the pattern. Well, first of all, it's going to have hi-hat in it, pretty much all the way through it, by the way. And we're going to play the snare drum on two and four, pretty much all the way through. Uh, the bass drum will have a, a count of on one, the and of two, and the and of three. Sometimes it'll switch and it'll play one and the and of three and the and of four. So a lot of different things there. But the first fill, let's talk about ending one. So this is going to have an ending one, ending two on it. So we're going to have to play these three, uh, three, three lines, and we're going to play these three times in a row. And when we play it, the first time through, this first ending, I'm going to play it like this. I'll do it slow. One, two, three, four. One and two and, and then I'm going to do the sixteenths, three E and the four E and, and then I'm going to go back to the very first crash that we start the song with, because it starts with a crash, and it's the very first line of, and the very first measure of the, the song. We'll play that again, we'll play the first line, we'll play the second line. When we play the third line, we're going to go to the end of that, which is ending two, and that fill will be played slow like this as well. I'll play it. It's going to sound like one and two and a three and a four E and. And then we have a crash at the end with the bass. Okay, I'll play that once again. One, two, ready, go. One and two and a three and a four E and. Crash. Okay, let's do ending one one more time. Make sure we got that one down. Two, three, go. One and two. Okay. All right, let's play this song, and I'll get this up and running. And uh, here is Fillin'.
All right, very fun to do. As you can see, it was a little more straight. It wasn't the triplet, wasn't that shuffly kind of sound to it. But that's still kind of bluesy. You could hear the blues in the background with it. And then the second time we did it, it actually had like a guitar solo. And a lot of times that happens with a lot of the blues stuff. They might play a, a blues all the way through, just normal with the drums and the bass guitar, and just taking its time, playing it. You know, obviously there was no words here, no lyrics. But um, if it had lyrics, of course, it would go through it all. And then the next time it would play again, the guitar solo would come in. And they might go back to another verse. Or they might have somebody else do a solo. So there's a lot of ways you could do this song. But again, it's just a kind of a, an example to show you. Okay? All right. We're going to go on to page 18. And I think that's what we're going to end with today. This is called the blues chart. Now, when I was in college, I had a lot of charts that they would put in front of me. And what a chart was as opposed to a transcription of, of a drum part, a lot of times the transcription itself was a written out piece, note per note, all the way through. With charts, they basically show you a basic form of, say, the beat, and then they want you to come up with the fill. It's all your idea to come up with the fill. Now, since this particular one is going to be doing a shuffle, or like a, a bluesy shuffle, and it's going to be kind of played slow, not too fast. The first time we play this, it's got a letter A, a letter B, and a letter C. Now, letter A, we're going to start with the hi-hat playing it. Then there's a guitar solo on section B, so I'm going to switch to the ride symbol for that. And then when we go back to C, they've got a keyboard melody or a keyboard solo, and we'll go back to the hi-hat again. Now, everywhere it says fill, we're going to put a little fill in there. Now, I am, I'm not thinking about any particular fill, but I'm going to put something in there, and you can see how I adapt each one. So it's not going to be the same fill. I'll kind of mess, mess around and kind of come up with some, some idea for this particular song. Because you can come up with whatever you want, as long as it fits within the context of the song. If it doesn't fit inside the, the song then something's going to go wrong. It's going to go longer than it needs to be. And again, your 12-bar blues is not going to be 12 bars. So, all right, let's take a listen to this one. I'm going to play along with it, and let's take it from there, and I'll show you how this is played. And you'll notice that a lot of the song, all these um, measures have four little slashes. And those four slashes are your pattern that you play at the beginning. They've got that written out. And they want you to keep playing that pattern over and over again. Then when the fill comes up, then you do a fill, but then you go right back to that pattern again. Now, they do write out where the crashes fall. And you'll see as we go on those where the crashes are at. Of course, the crash is, of course, the X above the line. And it's got, uh, you know, the line going through the X, and that's, that's going to be the crash. So they got one right at uh, section B. And they're going to put, have one, two, three, four crashes on section C. All right, so let's try this out. And here's how it sounds. This is Blue's Chart.
right, and that's it for the blues chart. So what this means by doing a blues chart as opposed to like a transcription where everything's written out note per note all the way through is it's easier for the writer to kind of write a little bit of a chart so that the drummer can follow it without having to write every little nuance note in there, crash cymbal, uh, even r write a perfect fill, you know, something that he wanted, you know, to play his way, where the drummer kind of has a little bit more freedom with this way. And that's why they use these a lot in colleges. So when I was in college, like I said, I had a lot of blues charts and they had, or jazz charts for that matter too, because we played a lot of different styles of music. But those charts were really helpful, at least because it, it gave you the, the, the whole diagram of the song so you knew where to go and when to stop and follow the music without actually having to write everything in. So it's kind of a nice little shorthand or a short version of writing something out, and it, it really helps a lot. And that way, like I said, it gives the drummer a little bit more freedom because sometimes when the drummer plays and has to play somebody else's fill, it, it, maybe it's, he doesn't feel like he should play that way. Maybe he feels it a different way. So this way allows the drummer to have a little bit more freedom. All right, well, that is it for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Again, check out my other shows when you get a chance. And if you have any questions, always free to drop a line at joedrums1 at comcast.net. And until then, you guys take care. Keep rocking. This is Joe Tortonesi signing off with Joe's Drum Shop. Have a good one. Take care. Keep rocking. Hey everyone, this is Joe here again. I thought it might be awesome to show you some of my favorite shuffle patterns played by some of my favorite professional drummers. Let's check out these amazing grooves right now. <laughs>